Exactly one month on from the first release, Android 14 Developer Preview 2 is now giving us a glimpse at future features coming to Pixel phones later this year, and here are some of the most notable new additions, or top features, as we'd put them. One of the most notable right out of the box is the brand new system icon for Android 14, and it's now available in various locations, including system notification pop-ups, things that you'll see like when you're plugging into the PC and do USB debugging. This little NASA-inspired logo that you may have actually seen bandied around and visible in all kinds of marketing material is now used here. Sadly though, it doesn't quite extend to the Android Easter egg, which at least at this stage is not available. So expect that in a future beta update. If you use gestures as your preferred navigation method and not on-screen buttons, you might notice some changes right away here. When using the back gesture for the first time, this is now housed within a pill-shaped container. What's more, this pill itself adheres to the dynamic color theme that you've chosen on your device. Because of this, using the action is now more obvious on either side of your screen and it's more visible that you are going to use that back gesture throughout the system. To help you manage your preferred navigation method, the navigation mode section is now elevated within the settings menu and it's moved out of the gestures menu into the system section itself as well as also being accessible separately from the display settings section here too. It's not a huge change but it does make finding this a little bit easier. On top of that, to conclude all of these gesture-based options, the long-awaited predictive back animation is another added feature, but it's not fully working here in Android 14 Developer Preview 2. It's only really available within the ses settings menu, and when you activate the back swipe gesture in areas such as the settings menu, as I mentioned, you'll sometimes see the previous section. It doesn't necessarily work flawlessly at this stage, as it often doesn't work as intended at all, but it is available and it's likely to be updated and, uh, and kind of progressed as the developer previews increase in consistency. Google is also improving the security and privacy menu that was actually introduced back with Android 13 here in this latest developer preview. Dropdown menus have been completely replaced with dedicated pages for each individual section. That means when selecting a section such as the app security, for instance, you'll get a unique page view with a prominent header image to symbolize or indicate what is being offered. Every section within the settings page has that unique themed image too. That's not all though, as the more security settings and more privacy settings sections, which were found in previous versions, have now been merged into a unified more settings pane for full access, making it a little bit easier as well for you to just access all of those functions in one convenient place. As you probably already know, Material U favors a rounded, bubbly aesthetic, and that is also an area of focus here in Android 14 Developer Preview 2. You might notice this most prominently when making selections within the settings menu, and after tapping a section, the chosen area will be highlighted. This is now more rounded and akin to the pill-shaped quick settings tiles. It's minor, but it overall helps the interface cohesion, and it's a nice addition considering that there is a lot of areas which Material U hasn't quite touched, at least at this stage. The default Pixel Launcher and Lock Screen widget has also gained lots of extra functionality and features on Pixel phones over the last few years, but here in Android 14 Developer Preview 2, it now appears on just one line on the lock screen. We're not sure if this is a permanent change, but things like the weather conditions are now in line with the current day and date, with no way to actually restore the two line option, at least at this stage. Within the languages and input section, you're also now able to make unique regional changes to on-device settings like temperature units from Fahrenheit and Celsius, the start of your day of the week, plus the numbers that are used on your device and what particular numbers are corresponding to your specific language. This also stacks with the existing per app language settings and now gives you full control over your system's localized experience, which makes things a little bit more intuitive right out of the box as well. Android 14 Developer Preview 2 also includes a new feature called Flash Notifications, which will let Pixel owners emulate that long lost notification LED, at least in an upcoming build. Google has added the Flash Notifications option within the Accessibility panel, which lets you utilize the camera LED to flicker when a notification is received on your device. You can also enable camera flash notifications or screen flash notifications completely independently from this section or simultaneously by heading to settings, accessibility, and flash notifications. From this new menu, you can tweak and toggle the options and even get a preview of the options in action. What's interesting is that you can get or get a notification when you're viewing the notifications themselves within the quick settings panel the flashlight or torch toggle 
will now quickly toggle on and off to notify you here too. It wouldn't be a developer preview or even a beta without some media player changes. And a very minor animation tweak that you might not notice right away is actually visible when viewing the lock screen media player itself. In Android 13, the player will slide up and expand into view on the always on display or when transitioning from the always on display to turning the screen on with the power button. Here in Android 14 developer preview 2, the media player will actually slide down before being accessible when doing this same gesture. It's not ex exactly massive, but it's a nice touch nonetheless. And now when you toggle or interact with the player using the available controls, you'll also see a wave glow animation effect when these have been activated. Google has also restored the glowing animation effect when audio is playing. It was actually added back in Android 13 QPR Beta 2, but has since been removed in those successive pu public betas. Both glow effects will use a complementary color of the album art or media being played for full cohesion. The changes continue as well with the media output switcher. This area will now show any nearby available speakers and cast enabled devices. What's more, the volume control slider now has a new icon to indicate that audio is muted on your device and you can still slide that and increase the volume as you need it. The wallpaper and style section is obviously a hub for all of the customization available on the default Pixel launcher. It hasn't received an overhaul here, but there are some minor changes and new options available to you. One such change is visible when setting a wallpaper on your phone. When using this option, you can quickly enter a full screen preview of your chosen image. If it's from the default image repository on your device, then you'll spot an upper right information and set wallpaper toggles. Tapping that eye icon will pull up a pop-up panel with the image title and some basic metadata with the image itself in full screen. Saved images, if you do choose those, will simply show a title and any metadata if they are available, but it isn't working perfectly just now. On the wider wallpaper and styles app section though, there is a brand new option that you'll spot, and this is the clock settings option. It appears that Google will let us pick a custom clock on the lock screen at some point in a future update. At this stage though, it doesn't work, which could be due to a missing APK or just that the functionality has not been fleshed out yet. It is a nice addition or it's nice to see this addition being added. And we do wonder if the two line clock option will be moved from display settings to this area in a future update too. But for now, none of this works as intended. Also to add, there is an added monochrome swatch that you can choose as part of the basic color section. When selected, rather than seeing colorful quick settings toggles or themed menus and buttons on your device, these will now simply follow an on-device system theme in preset. In light mode, you'll get milky white buttons. And when in dark mode, these active areas will be in a grayscale or grayscale options. This might be a perfect option for people out there that don't want complex color combinations on their device and maybe don't really care all that much for dynamic color as it currently stands. One final addition here in Android 14 Developer Preview 2 is that because the upcoming Pixel feature drop is actually missing in action, at least at this stage, this is the first update for Pixel phones to feature the March 2023 security patch. And we thought that was quite notable. That's gonna be neat if you want on-device security and actually willing to run what is potentially buggy software, but if you want the latest security patch, at the time of this video going live, it's actually the only way to get it on Pixel phones. So that's the Android 14 Developer Preview 2 update. If you haven't already, I would suggest checking out our dive into Dev Preview 1, so this has a little bit more context. You'll find a link to that below. Also, if you want some more Android 14 wallpapers that we've designed and we've attuned, then hit that like button. If we do hit 3000 likes, then we'll drop those in our dedicated folder, which you can find in the pinned comment as usual. I wanna ask you though, what do you think of Android 14 Developer Preview 2, or at least what you've seen? What do you think is the best new edition, or what are you looking forward to the most? Let me know down in the comment sections below. But until next time, as always, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching, and I will speak to you later.